high and lifted up. He was up there. Isaiah was up there. I saw the Lord. He didn't say I had a vision. Now it is said that he <coughs> lived in a palace. I'm not sure. Archaeologists say he did. I'm not sure. Because I don't think any of the commentators <coughs> who have commented on that portion of the Bible understand about Melchizedek. As I said, I knew there was something missing, and it's really missing. It would appear that in the Bible, suddenly there's Melchizedek. Where's he come from? Did he just drop from heaven? Nobody knows where he was born. Nobody knows the place of his death. He's called the King of Righteousness. He's called the King of Peace because he comes from Salem, which of course is where Jerusalem uh, was planted by David. And some say he was the Canaanite, black. Well, as there was no genealogy given in the scriptures, how does anybody know what he was? We don't know. But he's the only one in the whole of scriptures who's stated to be like the Son of God. And incidentally, he's the only one in, with a priesthood whose priesthood of Melchizedek that Jesus took up is said to be like that of Melchizedek. He blessed Abraham who had the promises. This is the secret. And this is the mystery revealed. I believe it's revealed. As I said, I couldn't understand. There's something missing in my understanding. Why the importance given, given to Melchizedek when there's hardly any description about him? And I believe the Lord revealed it to me. Melchizedek is there. He knows Abraham is coming. Well, he could have been told the news. He prepares food and drink for the army. But think who Abraham was. Abraham had visits from God. Abraham was spoken to by God to leave Ur of Ch the Chaldees with his family and to go to the area to which God sent him. The Lord appeared to Abraham when he was outside his tent. Three men suddenly appear. A Abraham feeds them. It's the Lord and two angels, it would seem. Abraham is told to get some birds and animals and chop them up, but God told him to do it. God talks to Abraham and God says, look at the stars, Abraham. Have a look. Your, your uh, progeny will be as numberless as the stars in heaven and think about the sand, Abraham. The natural ones will be as numerous and uncountable as the sand of the sea. God's talking to Abraham all the time. God tells Abraham, no, your servant is not your inheritor because God had said to Abraham, you're going to have a son. No son appears. Abraham says, I'm too old. Sarah's too old. How can we have a son? So Abraham says to God, let my servant be my inheritor. So God speaks to Abraham. God says to Abraham, oh no, not your servant. You're going to have a son by Sarah. Sarah's in the tent. She hears God telling Abraham. She's not before God. She's in the tent. Now this is as supernatural as you can get. She laughs inside. Ha 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 ha, she says. Impossible. Could I have a, have a son at my age? God says to Abraham, and he speaks to Sarah. Why did you laugh, Sarah? God's outside talking to Abraham in person. Then he speaks to Sarah. Somehow or other, I don't know how he did that, but he did. 
She's, and she was frightened. She said, oh, I didn't say that, think that. God said, yes, you did, Sarah. She just didn't believe him. So then the child is born, Isaac, called Isaac. And when Isaac becomes a young man, maybe of 20 or 25, God says to Abraham, offer up Isaac as a sacrifice. Take him to the mountain. So Abraham gets Isaac, who could be 20 or 25, not just a stripling, as we hear from the preachers. They go towards the place of sacrifice, and Abraham, uh, Abraham is asked by Isaac, oh, where's the offering for the sacrifice? Abraham internally is told something by God because Abraham says, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Whereas God had said to Abraham, you go and offer up Isaac. In his heart, Abraham is thinking, if I do offer Isaac, God's going to raise him up because he has promised that in him all the world will be blessed. There'll be a seed, Jesus Christ, through him. That's the faith of Abraham. So they get there, and Isaac, obediently, lies himself down on the altar of sacrifice, and Abraham picks up a knife to kill him. And a voice says, Stay your hand, Abraham. Don't do it. And there is a ram in the thicket. Abraham has all these experiences with God. Surely, Melchizedek wasn't, wasn't just living there without being told by God to do something. Oh no, we think of Isaiah. Now Isaiah had ascensions in vision and person. You can buy the extra book of the Bible, The Ascension of Isaiah. And I would really emphasize what a marvelous book it is. In The Ascension of Isaiah, what does he do? He ascends in person, somehow or other, up to the very throne room of God, which is the seventh heaven. And he goes through all the seven. And he describes when Jesus comes down to earth, he descends through the seven. He humbles himself. We know this is true from Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah says, in the year the king Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He was up there. Isaiah was up there. I saw the Lord. He didn't say I had a vision. Ezekiel saw marvelous things when he was in Babylon, but he had visions. And he was lifted up by the hair of his head by the Holy Spirit. Now these are marvelous experiences these prophets had. King David, he said in a prophecy, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make your enemies my footstool. You are a king forever after the order of Melchizedek. This is what David says. Melchizedek is a special person. To have an order of a priesthood he has to be a special present person. Now we think of Enoch. Enoch, in the book of one Enoch, was in the presence of God, but he had to be transformed to get there, in a sense. Then, of course, he was translated later and went up to heaven without dying, said to be a type of the Church of Jesus Christ. Enoch is, is not a type of Christ. Abraham is not a type of Christ. Abraham is his forebear. David is not a type of Christ, except in a small sense, but not a spiritual sense, a natural sense. There's nothing spiritual about David being a type of Christ. It's natural. We say Jesus is the greater David, but it's because of his kingship and rulership and the promise given to David that in his, that he would be the father and that he would be the progenitor of a king. 
who it turns out to be Jesus. This came through Samuel. So David has this prophecy about Jesus more than once, but he didn't see anything. He said on his deathbed, the Spirit of God, the, the Spirit of God spake by me, and his word was in my lips. So what were the supernatural experiences of David? Well, he ran through a troop of men, of the enemy, by the power of God. He knew the power of God to perform miracles. He knew the power of God to kill Goliath. He had the Spirit of God speak through him words of prophecy about Jesus. But he was not a priest. Abraham was not a priest. Isaiah was not a priest. They were prophets. Ezekiel was not a priest. Well, Isaiah and Ezekiel had their status in the nation of Israel, but they were not priests. Melchizedek's a priest. A priest serves before God. And what is he called? He is the priest of the high God. The priest of the Most High God. Now, all commentators miss the point because they don't know about the book of Enoch. They don't know about the book of Isaiah. They don't understand the book of Jude and the book of Peter and the, the Gospels from Jesus in relation to the quotations of the book of One Enoch. They didn't know it. These commentators are rather old. Go back 100, 200, 300, maybe 400 years. They are the only decent commentators we have in, in our churches. But when, when it is said that Melchizedek was the priest of the God Most High, where is God? In the seventh heaven. The Most High God is just not a God who's higher than all the other gods. Nothing to do with that. You do not compare the eternal God to the gods of the heathen who are demons so he is not said to be the Most High God because he's higher than the demon gods. There's no comparison. He can only be the Most High God because he's up there in the highest heaven and to be a priest before him, Melchizedek has to be operating somehow or other. It's in such connection with that God up there that he's either going up there or doing something and we are not told. It could be deliberately left out of the scriptures. We do not have the original Hebrew of the Old Testament. We do not have the original Greek of the New Testament. Nobody has them. We have copies. And as for the New Testament, what existed as the New Testament for 300 years is entirely missing with its manuscripts and and uh, translations all disappeared. There's a hatred amongst the enemy of Christ to the things of Christ, and that includes the Melchizedek priesthood. They hate the Melchizedek priesthood. And you know why? Because it's based on a likeness to the Son of God. It's based on a likeness to the Son of God. It's not just an ordinary priesthood. It ends up with Christ being the Melchizedek high priest in the book of Hebrews and also from the book of Psalms. So when you have a high priest whose God is in the highest heaven, as the scriptures say in different verses, you have to have a high priest who is up there, either going in or out in person having communication with that God. Moses had communication with God. Moses was all the time having communication with God and having God speak to him. All these men of God were. Gideon, Samson, anybody you can think of, Joshua, all of them, Elijah, Elisha, always communications with God. Do you mean to tell me that the Melchizedek priesthood is based on a man who has no communications with God incessantly? Impossible. Do you remember the story of Legion in uh, 
the Gospels, chapter 5, verse 2, where there was this man who dwelt amongst the tombs and uh, he confronts Jesus and the demons speak and they said to Jesus through him, Leave us alone, thou, you son of the Most High God. Jesus was the son of the Most High God. The demons hated him. Demons today hate Jesus. The occultic demons hate Jesus. The demons of the books that are not the Bible hate Jesus. And the demons hate Jesus. And Melchizedek is the only one who is said to be like the Son of God. Enoch was never like the Son of God. Adam was never like the Son of God. Moses was never like the Son of God. Joshua was never like the Son of God. Isaiah was never like the Son of God. David was never like the Son of God. Nobody in the Old Testament was like the Son of God except Melchizedek. And the demons hated that, as we discovered from this story of the healing of Legion. And Jesus said to the Legion, What is your name? And he was not asking the names of the demons. He wanted Legion to realize that he could be, that he was able to speak without having to speak demonic words all the time. So, of course, Legion obeys. He obeys the command of Jesus. And instead of listening to the, the demons and doing what, and saying what they want him to, he does and says what Jesus wants him to, and his, his name is Legion. So Jesus casts the demons out and they go into pigs because they wanted, wanted a body. Jesus said you can go into the pigs, probably a thousand pigs. So the pigs all got mad and rushed down to the sea and uh, killed themselves and I don't know where the demons went. You know that story in the Gospel. And here's another thing. Melchizedek blessed Abraham, who was inferior to him. If Abraham's inferior to, to Melchizedek, there's no way Abraham could all have all those conversations with God and promises with God and supernatural experiences with God for years on end. He had supernatural experiences with God, except that the one who was greater than Abraham, Melchizedek, had as much but more than ever Abraham had. You don't find he had any in the book of Genesis. You don't find he had any in the book of Psalms. You don't find he had any in the book of Hebrews. Missing. My personal opinion is it's deliberately missing because you want to know something? There's a book called the Torah that is not the Old Testament. It is not the Septuagint. It is not Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuty Deuteronomy, and Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It is nothing. It's a different book put out in oral form by the Pharisees of Babylon called the Torah. There is no mention in that book of Melchizedek. And I had a look at the book of Jubilees. Now the book of Jubilees is said to have been composed by Moses through an angel and the possibility is, and I think it was, but also it's been tampered with. There is not a word in it about the Melchizedek we read about in the Old Testament. What there is a word about is the importance of the Jews. You can look it up yourself if you have that book. Now what happened in the book of Hebrews is that we see that Jesus Christ is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Could Melchizedek have been greater than Jesus? No. But could Melchizedek have had experiences to have made it possible that he would be, be the founder, as it were, of the order of priesthood that is set there for Jesus Christ 
and he not have any supernatural experiences? Impossible. Melchizedek was blessed by God. He just seemed to have appeared. And we don't even know where he was born, what happened. Personally, he had to have been an outstanding human being. Enoch was. Melchizedek had to have been a more outstanding person than Enoch. But you see, the enemies of Christ don't worry so much about Enoch. He's not referred to in relation to the Son of God. But Melchizedek is like the Son of God. Oh no, the enemies of Christ hate the Son of God. As we had one example from the demons. Get away and leave us alone, you Son of the Most High God. They want nothing to do with Jesus. The enemies of Christ want nothing to do with Jesus as the Son of God. They didn't when he was on earth. What was it that the Pharisees and even the Sadducees disregarded and hated? When Jesus would say, my father and I are one, well, they'd say, he's making himself to be the son of God, equal to God. They crucified him. They crucified him. So great was their hatred of Jesus as the son of God. Well, he had to be crucified in the plan of God but woe betide those who crucify him. They have to face an eternity in hell. Amen. But when, when it is said that Melchizedek was the priest of the God Most High, where is God? In the seventh heaven. 